yet, but get your Bibles open, get them ready there this morning. Uh, don't forget now, this is Join the Church Sunday, so if you're not a member of the church and you're ready, uh, now if I don't know you, you you'll have to wait till next time, so uh, uh, I don't know you, so if you're saved and you've been baptized, you're ready to join the church this morning, this will be the day here in just a few minutes. We set this day aside. Don't always do that, but we are this morning, and we'll again soon if you're uh, if you're not not uh, ready today. All right. Now this morning, hold your Bibles open because we're going. I'm going to read several verses of Scripture, and I want to give you a um, a little thought that the Lord gave me the other morning. I heard a preacher just say a word. That, it's, I listen to preaching all the time, and sometimes the preacher just say one thing. Boy. It'll, Man, it starts growing in my heart. Completely different from what he was preaching on, but uh, uh, I get my own, my own thoughts out of it. And so this morning, I want to preach a message on only once. Only once. And what I want to talk about is some words in the Bible that are only there one time. You'll be surprised how how that works i've heard people say uh, about certain sins you know we talk about today and they'll say well it, the bible only mentions it one time so if it's that important uh don't you think lord no no i don't god don't have to say something one time for it to be very important Amen. and and some of the words like i mentioned this morning are are different you know in your bible your king james bible there are 783,137 words. The longest word in the Bible is Isaiah 58 and or Isaiah 8 and verse 1. And this guy's name was Maher Shaler Hashbaz. That probably ain't the way to say it, but I go by all them silly. Maher Shaler Hashbaz. What, what was that your name? I mean, some of y'all, some of these kids on these buses got some weird sounding. You can't write it, you can't spell it, you can't say it. But uh, that's the longest word in the Bible. Did you know uh, that um, that the the word I'm not I can't prove this, but I've heard several people say it very close that the words "fear not," "fear not," are in the Bible 365 times. Isn't that amazing? There's just something different about that book. One for every day of the year. Fear not. Did you know that there's uh, the word "then." I checked this one myself, didn't count at all. I spent up to my strongest recording, been counting words last couple of days. The word then, just, you know, now and then, okay, then, brain over here, and then they came, you know. That word uh, is on about almost 2,000 times. The word then. Now, this is interesting. The word go is over a thousand times in the Bible, but the word stay is only about 40. How weird. That's interesting. Isn't it? God said go a thousand times, and God said stay 38 or 9 times. Very interesting. Now, uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff like that about in the Bible. And this morning, I'm going to show you a word that's only in the Bible one time. Luke chapter number 23. The book of Luke chapter number 23. Please leave your Bibles open this morning as we'll be uh, reading much more than normal for a Sunday morning in just a few minutes. Luke chapter number 23, and look uh, at the, uh, the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ, and look here at verse 33. Luke chapter 23 and verse 33. You'd never believe this, but here it is. Luke 23, 33. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the male factors, one on the right hand, the other on the left. The word there is Calvary. One time. Search in vain to find me any other time in the Bible. Oh, you say, Brother Danny, Matthew, uh, uh, Mark, and, or, or Matthew, Mark, and John mentioned no, Yes, uh, they absolutely do. But it's called by its other name, Golgotha. Actually, Calvary, Mount Calvary. Golgotha were two ways of saying the same place, uh, the place of a skull. So in Latin, they say Calvary would be the word for Golgotha. 
and it was a hill outside of Jerusalem where Jesus was crucified. Honest to goodness, wouldn't you think some of the most important event in the world when Jesus died for our sins, that the Apostle Paul would mention it, that one of the epistles would mention it, that it wasn't mentioned somewhere else? One time. One time. Only one time. Isn't that amazing? You say, well, Brother Danny, do you think there's a reason for that? Absolutely. I really, really do. I believe it's uh, every, nothing, everything's in the Bible for a reason, especially something that important, especially something that big, especially something that, 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 uh, uh, good, that powerful is more in the Bible one time. Why does he say Calvary one time and then he calls it Golgotha, 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 and the other three Gospels and never mentions it again? I'll tell you why. I tell you why. Ain't no doubt in my mind. You'd think the Lord had mentioned it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. I'll tell you why this morning. Because at Calvary, something took place that would never happen again, that has never happened before. There's only one time and one place for Calvary. There'll never be another one. It can only, it's so great. It's so wonderful. God only said it one time. Amen. Hallelujah, brother. Hallelujah. Let, you know, the Lord said, when he got up there on that cross, uh, uh, when he's over here praying, he said, let this cup pass from me. And then when he got up there on that cross, uh, it's, it's, it's sunny. He said, uh, one time he said, um, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That's an interesting study. And then a few minutes later, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Now, you know that Jesus was God in flesh. So he spoke as a man, as a man, Oh, here, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And I thirst. That's what a man says when he's in hell. And he, he had forsaken my God as a man, but as his son, he said, Father, into thy hand, I commend my spirit. That's, that's mind boggling. The deepest, smartest people in the world can't understand all that about him being God and the Trinity present there. And God, him speaking to God as a man, him speaking to God as, as his son, as God in the flesh. Interesting, amazing study. I'm glad to say there was a Calvary and there'll never be a need for another one. He got the job done, brother. I want to show you something here in your Bible. Take your Bible, turn to the book of Hebrews chapter 9 and let's look at it. The theme, actually theme, part of the theme of the book of Hebrews is to show you that the Lord did this thing and paid for our sins once and for all and forever. It never be needs to be repeated. It never needs to be modified. It never needs to be replicated. It never needs to be duplicated. It never needs to be counterfeited. It happened one time and one time only. All right, we're in Hebrews 9. Look at Hebrews 9, 28. Hebrews 9, 28. So Christ was once. There's my word. That's what I'm preaching on this morning. Once, brother. He didn't have to come back and do it again, fix it up, do it better next time. One time, brother. One time. And it satisfied the judgment of God. He said he was offered once to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him will he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Chapter 10. Look at chapter 10, very next chapter. We'll just pick out a few verses here. Look at verse number 10. Uh, God, The Lord came to do God's will in verse 9. And then look at Hebrews 10, 10. By the which we will, His will, Him doing God's will, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Amen. See that? That's why Calvary's in the Bible one time. One time, he said, once and for all, brother, this thing's done one time. God let his son come down. He did a good enough job that it would never have to be done again. I'm telling you, when he opened his eyes and a baby in that manger until he closed them on that cross, he never made one mistake. He never took one step he shouldn't have took. He never said one word that he shouldn't have said. He is absolutely perfect in all ways and manners. I'm talking about my Savior I'm talking about this morning, y'all. That's what's going to keep me out of hell and take me to heaven. He went and paid that price once and for all, people. You know what? If you're healthy enough to walk in here this morning and your name's in the book of life and you ain't going to hell, that you ought to tear you up, buddy. You ought, you ought to be the happiest people in Burke County sitting right here this morning. Glory to God. He did it once and for all. But we're not through Hebrews 10. We're not through reading here. Look at verse number 11. Here's what they did in the Old Testament. And every priest 
standeth daily. That's what they did in the Old Testament. That's what the Catholic Church still tries to do. Offering daily. Ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. But 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice, one time, for sin forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Look at verse 14. For by one offering, there it is again, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Look at verse 18. Now where remission of sin is, there is no more offering for sin. God, you're wasting your time trying to make an offering for sin now. It's done been made one time. Quit wasting your time. Trust the only one that ever did it right. Look at verse 26. Look at verse 26. For uh, if we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more, no more sacrifice for sin. 28. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. But look on down there uh, where he said, uh, it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. You're a spectacle. You had compassion. Verse 34. For yet a little while, the just shall live by faith. 38. We are not of them that draw back to perdition, but of them that believe the saving of the soul. This only happened one time. It only happened one way. Jesus died on the cross. It was typified by Moses in the Old Testament when God said, hit that rock. Bam. He didn't say keep beating it till water comes out. He didn't say beat it again till tomorrow when they get thirsty again. He didn't say beat it again next week when they get thirsty again. That's why he didn't get to go to the promised land, by the way. He hit it twice when God said only hit it once. That's how important this one time thing is. That's why that's how important. God don't need any substitutes. God don't need any kind. You say, Danny, the world has changed and we have to be relevant to this world and all that. No, 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 that, that ain't right. You're right about the world changing. You, you ain't no doubt about that. Uh, but I'm telling you what, brother. God's plan of redemption happened one time, once for all, forever, and it need not ever happen again. You know what he said when he died? It is finished. Thank God, saints. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified. Knowing not, it was for me he died at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. What about on a hill far away, sit an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And on that old cross, Jesus suffered and died. Thank God, don't ever let that old story get old to you. We don't need another sacrifice. Once for all, forever, the debt has been paid. The old account was set long ago. He paid for my sins, past, present, future, everything I've ever done and everything I ever will do once and for all. Only one Calvary. See, it don't matter what Allah did or didn't do or Buddha did or didn't do. One time, one Calvary, the Lord said it once. That's a plenty. Amen? That's a plenty. It shows does you the depth of human sin. Uh, you look at all the results of sin in the world. My goodness, you got visitation. You see all these kids on TV starving in other countries. Little kids raped, murdered, mutilated, sold like cattle and dogs and all the filthy, wicked stuff that's going on. And you think, my goodness, how sin has ruined this world. You see the, the depths of human sin. But you don't really see the depths of sin until you go to Calvary. And you look and see that, that God gave His perfect Son. That shows you how bad sin is. He didn't send an animal. God didn't send an angel. He didn't send one of the Old Testament prophets. His son, brother, his son, and gave his life for our sin. Thank God for Calvary. It shows the highest love there is. Amen? It shows the, uh, the only way we can be saved. That's right. You know, that man one time, uh, years ago, that story went, where he rode that, uh, he was a conductor of a train, and on them old time train, they had what they call a cow catcher. And it had, it's like a, like a grill, like on the front of a truck. So these guys got where they hit brush or hit deer or something like that. It protects your truck. And them trains had a big old cow catcher on there. They said there's a little girl uh, out there, and they waved, waved every day. When the train come by and the conductor waved at her, one day they went, 
One day they come down through there, and she was out playing on the track. And the train was getting closer and closer, and, uh, and he thought and he knew he was going to hit her. And they said that conductor climbed out of that train, got down on that cow catcher because it couldn't stop, and grabbed that little girl like that and threw her aside and fell to his death. And the train crushed him. And they said that man uh, died as a hero, as uh, saving that little girl. And I'm telling you this morning, that's just a tiny picture of how I was when I was 17, 18. I was on, I was right in front of the train, brother. The devil was getting ready to mow me down. I mean, take me to hell forever and ever and ever. And Jesus looked down, got out on the front of that thing, threw me out of the way, and gave his life. That's why there's only one Calvary. It never happened before. It'll never happen again. Only one time. Amen. That's plenty. Now I'll show you a second word. That's only one time in the Bible. This will shock you. Turn in your Bible to the book of uh, Isaiah. The book of Isaiah back in the Old Testament. And these two definitely tie together. The book of Isaiah. I believe it's chapter 57. We'll look here in just a minute. And, and show you a ver another word that's only one time in the the Bible. Isaiah chapter 57 verse 15. Look at this. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity. Do you believe that? That word is only one time in the Bible. Eternity. We say it all the time. People sing about it. Or you'll go for heaven for eternity. Go to hell for eternity. Only one time? You reckon it's true if God only says it once, it's not really important? Why is the Bible only say eternity one time? Now, just like Calvary, there's one Calvary, and then there's Golgotha, place of the skull, all referring to the same place, but God only said Calvary one time. Same way with eternity. He only said it one time, but there's other places where it'll say forever and ever, and forever, and forever and ever. Smoke grows up forever and ever. Eternal life. Stuff like that. They all mean the same, but only one time he says eternity. You know why that is? There's only one eternity because it's so big they ain't room for another one. And there's only one Calvary, and that one Calvary determines your future in eternity forever and ever. I know that's oversimplifying it for this world tries to make everything complicated so they can sin, make an excuse and try to confuse religion. But the bottom line is, brother, we're all born sinners. We're all born with a sinful nature. There's one remedy and that was happened on Calvary and our eternal destiny is one of the other two places forever and ever and ever and ever. Only one. Ever mamma, ever papa, ever preacher, ever daughter. Every teenage boy, every Sunday school teacher, every deacon, every uh, grandma, every papa, every person in your family, every person uh, at your wedding, every person at your, uh, your you're related to, every person where you work is on their way to eternity. Every one of us here this morning is on our way to eternity. Amen? There is an eternity. You know what Bob Jones Sr. said one time? He's a very wise man. The old peanut farmer from down there in Georgia. And God called him to preach. And uh, he built that great, what used to be a great, great place down there in Greenville, South Carolina. And uh, trained a lot of people to serve the Lord. And, and uh, uh, old Bob Jones going down the road one day. And he said, he said, I was walking down the road and a profound thought struck me. And here it was. He said, I'm going to live forever somewhere. I better be figuring out how to live. That's profound, people. That's profound. You're going to live forever. When you were born, when you were conceived in your mother's womb, you got a never dying soul that will live forever somewhere. You better start figuring out how you're, where you're going and where how to live. You better get it figured out. If you're here this morning, you're not ready for eternity. And you say, well, I got bills. I had people tell me this. Well, I got so many bills to pay and I've got stuff and I want to go here and go there and do this and do that. You some kind of nut. Listen, if you live to be 100 years old, it ain't that much. 
It ain't that much forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And we got to pay our bills. We got to have a house. Got to have a car. We got to do all that. But I'm telling you, people, this life is nothing. The Bible, it's a, it's a, it's a breath. It's spilt water on the ground. It's just here today, gone tomorrow. You think of all the people that we used to know. I, I think now, the, the older I get, I start thinking, so and so's dead. So, brother, so and so. All these preachers that I looked up to for years, they're all gone. They're all gone. And pretty soon, my crap will all be gone. And pretty soon, your crap will all be gone. One generation comes, another one leaves. This world's not our home, and it's not what's really important. It is eternity. It is eternity. Everybody, how, how you look at uh, 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 one time. I was trying to figure it out, and it, it, it's a joke. The preacher told said, a guy got up to see the Lord, and the Lord said, he said, Lord, uh, how do you figure time up here? And the Lord said, well, here, a million years is like a minute. He said, wow, that's something. He said, Lord, how do you figure money up here in heaven? And the Lord said, well, here, a million dollars is like a penny. And he said, oh, yeah. He said, Lord, can I borrow a penny? And Lord said, sure, wait a minute. <laughs> See, boy, y'all, you're worse than I thought you was, really. I, I mean, I know y'all slow, but good night, Lord. Uh, yeah, just, just, <laughs> just as you, I see some, some of you are still here. Just listen to the rest of it, okay? Forget it. Or just laugh and act like you know what I'm talking about. Nobody won't know how dumb you are, how blonde you are. Uh, but look, look, y'all, look. Hey, hell is not just in our mind. Hell is not just for a minute. Heaven is not just a minute. There ain't no such thing as purgatory. In the Bible, in the Bible, which has proven itself to be true over the centuries, there are only two places that you go when you die. And we're all on our way to one of them two places. Right now. Right now. You'll look around one day, Brother Danny will be gone. I'll look around one day, you'll be gone. We're all going. Heaven or hell, only one eternity. They ain't room enough for another one. Just as sure, just as sure as there's time, there's an eternity. The question is not, I, I know Christian people, they're all tore up over whose side to take uh, the, 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 uh, the election and the war in Hamas and the Jews and what's Putin doing and what's uh, the, the China going to do and all that. I know we have to give some thought to stuff like that, but good night morning, y'all. The question not is not, my question not this morning is uh, which side of the political aisle uh, you think you're on, who's your favorite candidate for this or governor or whatever. Uh, the question is not uh, who's going to win the NBA finals. The question is not, brother, who's going to win the World Series. The question is not uh, Taylor Swift's next album and is she going to break up with her boyfriend and uh, that, 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 the, the question is not are we all going to have to drive electric cars and, and what's going to happen with the government uh, the question is eternity where are you going to spend eternity that's all that's going to matter one day much sooner than you realize it's eternity I'll close in a minute with a few thoughts about eternity there's a, not another room for another you know, most people can't think past 24 hours. It's all now, 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 me, me, me. What am I going to do today? What am I going to get today? What am I going to do? But I'm going to tell you, I'm warning you about eternity. When time shall be no more. If you're going on a, if you're going down in a town and there's a warning and there's a sign saying, bridge is out, another sign, bridge is out, another sign, bridge is out. You can't get mad at them, the state, for putting up them signs to warn you. Won't they leave me alone? I'll drive where I want to. No. It's a warning sign. It's a warning sign. Slow down. Wreck up ahead. Bridge gone. Trouble. Crash. Roadblock. Detour. That's what I'm doing here this morning. I'm waving my hand saying, eternity. I'm waving my hand. Eternity. We're all going to eternity. And I'm waving. Don't get mad at me. I'm just the warning sign that God put in front of you to keep you from going the wrong way. Turn, brother. Turn to Jesus this morning. Turn to the Lord. People watching at home and online, turn to the Lord. Eternity is all that really matters. The Bible calls it outer darkness forever and ever. A blackness of darkness forever. Now here's what you're going to hear. You're going to hear one of two things. Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels, or you're going to hear, enter into the joy of thy Lord. 
One of them two. There ain't no purgatory. There is no in between. You don't go to purgatory and pay for sin. Jesus already paid for them sins. If you, that's why hell's forever and ever and ever. A sin against an eternal God, you'll never get it paid for. That's why it's forever. I don't like the thought of that. I don't enjoy telling people that. But you cannot believe the Bible and not believe in hell. It's impossible. You know, everybody wants to believe there's a heaven. Nobody wants to believe there's a hell. You can't have it both ways. The same Bible tells us there's one, there's another. Jesus didn't die on a cross and suffer just so we just wouldn't go to sleep and be put in a grave. That's a big price keeping somebody from going to sleep. No, no, brother. It's bigger. It's more important. It's eternity. You hear me? It's eternity, people. We're talking about forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Only one. Not room for another. High up in the mountains over yonder. Across the pond. There's a great big rock. And they say it's a hundred miles square. A hundred miles up. And a hundred miles, miles tall. Eight, ten thousand feet tall. Solid rock. And the legend goes that a little bird comes every one thousand years. And sharpens his beak. On that rock. By the time that little bird. Wears that thing down to a small little round pebble. Eternity's just starting. They say if a bird. Went down to the beach. Picked up one grain of sand. Y'all listen to me. You know how important it is to get saved. You, tenor, you know how important it is to get this right. You ain't going to get another chance. You blow it, you ain't coming back. You're not going to reincarnate and come back and try it again, try to do better. One chance, y'all, you better nail this thing down. You better get it right. You better get it right. Yeah, if a bird picked up one grain of sand, flew to the moon, dropped it down, come back, flew it, got another grain of sand, flew to the moon, dropped it down. By the time he moved every grain of sand at the beach of North Carolina, eternity's only begun. One man said this, all that pleases us is but for a moment. Everything you enjoy, it's just for a moment. And all that troubles us, thank God, is just for a moment. You sitting here this morning with your heart broke? You sitting here this morning, it's just going to be a moment. It's, it's really not important what we have or don't have down here. We got to have, don't get me wrong. You ought to work hard. You ought to provide the best you can for your family. All that's well and good. But just remember, it's just for a moment. You'll settle this matter today. There's no chance of settling it then. Only one issue. If you'll trust Jesus Christ and what He done for you on the cross, God will give you His righteousness. If you'll say, Lord, I believe that Jesus died for my sin. And I want to go to heaven forever like that preacher's talking about. God will give you his right. That's what he wants. He wants somebody that's pleased with his son. And God is pleased with people that are pleased with his son. I'll take Jesus. I don't know about you. There's only one eternity. There's two kinds of people in this room this morning. You'll spend eternity with God in heaven. Or it's hell with the devil. I said one time, this guy said, uh, young man went out witnessing. True story. And went up to this businessman. And he thought this businessman would, uh, would help him out. And, or he tried to witness to him, actually. And come up to him, give him a track. And that businessman said, don't bother me, son. He said, I'll just tell you about your best friend. He said, don't bother me, son. Well, that's mighty big talk for a little two-legged, pea-brained creature that worms are going to eat pretty soon. You know, that's what happens when you die. Worms get you. That's big talk for a little squirt like that. Don't bother me, son. One of these days at the judgment when the, when the dead shall raise and all of them that come up from all the world stand before God, he's going to say, God, please, God, please, God, please. The Lord say, don't bother me, son. Bother me. Cast him in the outer darkness. 
You ain't got time for him now. He ain't going to have time for you then. You don't make room for him now. He ain't going to make room for you then. It's eternity. Thank God there was one Calvary. And that was enough. To keep us out of hell for one eternity. That's all there ever could be. I want you to stand with your heads bowed. Kerrigan, come up here. I want you to play. And some of you ladies come. I want us to sing a song here this morning. Some of you ladies come and help. Called, I've been to Calvary. I've been to Calvary. I hope you have. We're going to pray. If you're here this morning and you don't know you're saved. If you don't know you're saved. Would you come this morning. Get down on your knees. And say Lord. There's only one Calvary. There's only one eternity. There wasn't room for another. Only one time in the Bible. But that's all there was a need for. Heavenly Father. I pray for that young man. For that young lady. I pray this morning Lord. That you would touch their heart. Whoever it might be. That needs to make things right. And settle this matter for eternity. God help them to do it right now. I do pray this in Jesus' name. And for his sake we ask it. Amen and amen. If you're here this morning you don't know where you're going when you die, don't be ashamed. Something's already coming. They're singing this morning. Settle it right now. Come on, right now. Come on. That's good. I ain't neither. I ain't nothing wrong with that. I ain't never tasted champagne. Don't want no champagne. Don't want to be popular in this world. Don't matter. Amen. Oh, Lord. We better get ready for eternity, people. Get out of your seat. Come this morning. Come on. Come on. Everybody help me when they sing the Lord. Come on. It's good. We better be getting ready for eternity. Get our eyes on things above, not on things down here. How about it, girl? How about it? Help me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, don't spend your time chasing the fortune. Get it, get it right with the Lord. That's right. That's right. Come on. Come on. You're here this morning. You need to get your heart right with God. Just get out of here. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. These ladies come over here and pray with these girls. Yeah, ma'am. Somebody come pray with these girls over here. That's right. Come on now, y'all sing now. Hey. I've been in the power. Woo! Yeah, I'm glad I've been there. One day is life for me. Are you glad you go to Calvary this morning? Come to Calvary. Come on. Come on, young man. Come on, mama. Come on, daddy. Just get out of your seat and come right now. Come on. Get out of your seat and come right now. Amen. 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 Yes. Yeah, pray these boys, y'all. Amen. These boys need to get ready for eternity. You need to get ready for eternity. You'll be surprised how fast life life goes just like that. It goes just like that. It's a moment. Life is really short, y'all. Life is really short. You better get ready for up there. Amen. They're laying up treasures up yonder. Life is short. Life is short. Only one eternity. Only one Calvary. Amen. 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 We can have peace when it don't even make sense. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! Yeah, everybody. I've been to Calvary. That's the most important thing there is. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, glory. Say it, ladies. Hey, man. I'm forgiven. I've been set free. Hey, man. Yeah, just keep going. Hey, man. You let God speak to your heart this morning. I've been to Calvary. That got me ready for eternity. Set free this world. 
Amen. One more time. One more time. While these are praying. Amen. Amen. I've been to Calvary. So that got me ready for eternity. I've been to Calvary. That got me ready for eternity. Right. Right. Amen. This world is Glory. You playing softly this morning? I don't, I don't know why you would uh, say, I don't know about this, Brother Danny. Oh, you, you get, there's one Calvary. It'll get you ready for the one eternity. Just one. There ain't room enough for another. There ain't room enough for all religions to be right. All religions can't be right. They contradict each other. You say, well, if you believe they're right, they're right. That's crazy. That's crazy. Something ain't true just because you believe it. Something's true because it's true, whether you believe it or not. There's only one Calvary. It only happened one time. Eternity's a long time, brother. Long time. Only one. Amen. All right, you can, you can be seated. She's playing softly. Thank God for these that come, got saved, got right, whatever happened over here. Uh, everybody that's ready to join the church, come on up here right now. Come on right now. Make a line across. Let's go. Let's just come right here in front of me right here. Amen. Right here across here, y'all. You would. Just... Amen. You've been saved. You've been baptized. You're trying to live right. Come on up here right now. We're going to make a line all the way across. You can go ahead and line up that way too, girl. Right here. Amen. 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 Boys, y'all, y'all, little ones that have just come, you'll have to wait. You have to wait. We talk, okay? You have to wait. We talk. I know about everybody up here. If you haven't talked to them, you have to wait. All right. Amen. Good night in the morning. I want you to look at this crowd here. Little Maple won't join church about time. She's been backslid long enough. Amen. All right, real soft. All right. We're on, I'm going to name, let me say, good night, Emily. And all y'all over there. They've been, they've been coming to church here for five years, ain't you, at least. Uh, what a blessing. They, I'm telling you, them people live way down yonder. Beautiful place. Hour from here, right? Yeah, it's a long way. I went there one time to visit them. Lord have mercy. And the kids, what a blessing they are. We'll take that somebody want to make a motion. Second. All in favor, let me know. An uplifted hand. Amen. All right. Debbie, that woman right beside them was, was the one. She was real mean to me when I was little. That's my sister. And she, so I don't know if, she, I don't know if I'm going to allow this or not. I've been trying to forgive her all these years. No, I'm telling you, I couldn't ask for a better sister than her. She took care of me, boy. Amen. I, I I got two mamas, her and Carrie, and and they they both on me all the time. And uh, Debbie just she you couldn't ask for better. Honest to goodness, I think Mom's spirit fell on her when Mom passed away. I do. And so uh, I, I just go ahead and get Magdalene, Bradley, and me, all at the same time. Amen. You know, Bradley got saved about a year ago. I can say something about all these people, but my goodness, we're going to hurry here. Someone make the motion. Second, all in favor, let me know. An uplifted hand. No, DJ, we know better. We're not, we'll just skip over him. Uh, all in favor of him not being a member. Uh, no, no. Thank God for DJ. Uh, uh, someone make a motion. Second, all in favor, let me know. An uplifted hand. This young lady, I forgot your name. Gwendolyn, that's right. Miss Kelly, my wife met her and picked her on a bus and she's been coming and got right with the Lord isn't that a blessing someone want to make the motion second all in favor let me know an uplifted hand these people that are not raising their hand they're not they're probably not members either so don't think somebody's voting against you uh, if you're here uh, all right then we got brother Kyle here and Katie Sue and uh, Amanda what a blessing they've been been coming I don't know y'all been coming almost almost close to you eight months what a blessing the Lord sent them here Lord, send you to church. You need to get in on it. Amen. Is that right, Katie? <laughs> or Katie, but I call her Katie Sue. It seems fit more fitting. But uh, anyway, take them. All. 
Favor, let me know an uplifted hand. All right. And this young man right here, I don't know him. He's been coming here lately. And the Lord sent us, Clayton. Uh, he was needing a good church, and we was needing a good young man. So we ain't got none around here. I'm just kidding. But uh, thank God for him and uh, how God's used him. Been a blessing. So I'm going to make the motion. Second. All in favor, let me know an uplifted hand. And then we got one in Poco. What's her name? Ella. Ella. Yeah, okay. Ella's been saved, been baptized. And I, I skipped over her. I don't know, but we'll skip him, right? Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm going to make the motion. Second. Let it all be known with an uplifted hand. And then we got one in Poco. Got saved at the youth rally. Ain't that a blessing? Ain't that a blessing? And they ain't missed a lick. Been involved. Been getting into everything. Coming out working. Coming out fellowshipping. And that's what you got to do. When you get into church, get in it head over heels. Be a part of everything. Don't say, well, that's a part of our church. I don't participate in. No, the best thing to do is get in everything a church does that you possibly can. He'll bless you for it. All right. Somebody want to make the motion? Second. All in favor, let me know an uplifted hand. And then we've got Brother Kevin and these girls here, Lexi and Leah. And they're, they're, they're pretty mean, but I told them I'd let them slide. Now, they've been coming here since they were a little bitty. And I, they just live right across there. You, it's less than a mile to their house, that straight across the interstate. And, you know, uh, his mom, Ms. Rhonda, passed away. A year, been a year now, Kevin. And they left them with a big home, Kevin's little girls. And she, they missed their granny. I know that. And uh, praise God for these girls. Brother Kevin, he's got a great testimony. You ought to see his house over there. He's got a music store in his house. Guitars, pianos, all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, you ought to go visit them. You ought to go see each other. Uh, we're, most of y'all are really slack and not even knowing who you go to church with. There's celebrities in here. You don't even know it. <laughs> One of the bus kids said, are you famous? I said, well, maybe a little bit, but I ain't because I want to be. Uh, but I'm telling you, uh, we got a bunch of good people in our church. Praise God for them. So someone will make the motion. Second. I'll let me know if there's a hand favoring that. Say amen. All right. Kim, you got these, all these, get all their information. We'll leave it. That is, you got a count there? Somebody count them? Huh? Third, 17. Praise God. There's some good gossips go spread all over town. Put that on nose book. 17 people joined Shining Light this morning. Their own free will. Glory to God. Amen. All right. Now here's what we're going to do. Uh, the Bible talks about giving the right hand to fellowship. That, that shaking hands business is more than just some tradition. It's biblical. And so we're going to have to come around and give these folks the right hand to fellowship. Be friendly. Welcome to be a part of our church. And uh, uh, you're going to need them hands there in a second. Uh, 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 so uh, let's let's do it. The, the Mueller's are here. Y'all might want to go ahead and join too. Or they went. No, I'm just kidding. They they have a house church. That's all they got out there in Iowa, and got a good thing going. The Lord's blessing their work, and they'll be with us tonight. Also, Lord willing, and all them kids. They've been a real blessing to us. We're glad they're here. And he actually done teenage Sunday school class this morning. How'd it go back there, brother? They didn't charge you with. Oh my goodness! It's first time. It's first time. You must have done really good. Apostle Paul couldn't keep their attention back there. It's true, right? Uh, but thank God, him uh, filling in for us this morning. All right, we're ready to go. Now, don't miss tonight. Don't miss tonight. It's very important. Don't miss uh, next Sunday's Father's Day. Let's all stand. We're gonna pray, and and we'll have. Some, She's going to play again, and I want y'all to come around and give these folks the right hand of fellowship around this way like this, okay? All right. Let's everybody pray. Brother Steve, you dismiss if you would, please. Everybody pray in fellowship.